In a distant location from Cremo Harbor, waves crash violently, and a colossal sea monster, the Gigatitan, with lobster-like eyes and no eyelids, observes the distant harbor. It spots a massive mermaid, prompting the Gigatitan to contemplate whether to confront or flee from the formidable creature. Unable to escape due to equally powerful creatures in the deep sea, the Gigatitan recalls past humiliations and decides to stay in its coastal sanctuary. The Gigatitan, determined, notices that only one massive mermaid is present, resolving to fight before it gathers an army. Meanwhile, at a celebratory ceremony on a ship, Javier senses an approaching danger in the sea, alarming Lloyd, who tries to warn Count Cremo. The Count asks his knight Sir Genovan if he senses something, but the knight says there's nothing. Count Cremo dismisses the warning but Lloyd is persistent. The Count orders the ships to move far away from the statue. Lloyd and Javier, seeing that it will take a while for the ships to move, cut the ship's mooring ropes, releasing it and urging others to do the same. Chaos ensues as the Gigatitan emerges, engulfing the mermaid statue and other ships with a massive tidal wave. A colossal explosion erupted as Gigatitan emerged from the sea, charging towards the mermaid statue. With a body length of 90 meters and weighing around 2,500 tons, Gigatitan crashed into the statue, demolishing it with a powerful body slam. The upper half of the statue soared through the air, wreaking havoc on the harbor and the city square. Chaos ensued, and the sudden tragedy left people in shock. Count Cremo begins to realize the severity of the situation. Gigatitan, displaying unprecedented behavior, approached the city with destructive intent. Meanwhile, Lloyd summoned creatures to rescue those in the water. The sea monster, unfazed by coastal cannons, advanced towards the city, demolishing guard towers. An outpost commander attempted to stop Gigatitan with an explosion, but the creature continued its relentless approach. The situation was dire, and the city's defense seemed futile against the unstoppable creature. Javier, seeing the situation, decides to confront the Gigatitan. He calls for Lloyd but is surprised to see Lloyd fleeing in the opposite direction. Lloyd, torn between wanting to protect Javier and avoiding unnecessary risks, tried to convince him to retreat, but Javier remained determined to face the monster. Javier is disappointed in Lloyd's action and decides to confront the Gigatitan alone. He uses Mana Blast and rides his sword towards the shore. Javier uses his most powerful strike but Mana Blast bounced off the hard shell of the Gigatitan. Meanwhile, Lloyd contemplates whether to help or not. His skill is only construction-based and he is not as powerful as Javier. Eventually, he comes to the realization that if the city is destroyed, his construction payment will be delayed. Lloyd then orders Bangul to use Volcanic Blast to fly to the city. Meanwhile, Javier is still fighting the monster but no matter what attack he tries, he couldn't damage the Gigatitan at all. Unexpectedly, a colossal water-filled creature named Hamon, about 60 meters in size, rolled and crashed into Gigatitan's side. The water balloon, swelling with swallowed seawater, reached a weight of several hundred tons, causing Gigatitan to stagger momentarily. As Gigatitan unleashed powerful attacks, Javier evaded and lured the creature away from the populated area. Lloyd, recognizing the challenge of piercing Gigatitan's tough shell, pondered the potential use of his surveying skill on the colossal creature. Curiosity prompted him to activate the skill, leading to the unexpected revelation of detailed data resembling a map of Gigatitan's body. Scanning Gigatitan with his surveying skill, Lloyd discovers that the Gigatitan's exoskeleton is a complex structure of dentin and chitin, with fine wavy patterns converging towards its horn. Activating the design skill simulation mode, Lloyd experiments and finds a weak point between the 11th and 12th exoskeleton plates in Gigatitan's chest-abdomen connection. The simulation reveals that piercing this point diagonally at a 45-degree angle, after removing the horn, could deliver a fatal blow. Communicating this information to Javier, Lloyd is carried by Javier to a safer location and shares the details of Gigatitan's weakness. Meanwhile, Javier engages in a dynamic battle with Gigatitan, successfully slicing off its horn. Lloyd, observing the confrontation, decides to draw aggro from Gigatitan by distracting it with the mermaid statue in Cremo City, 
recalling a rule from online gaming to make the opponent angry enough to engage. Lloyd secures the damaged statue to a large cart and, with the assistance of his monster companion Podong, races towards Jagadatan. The cart's erratic movements, mimicking a lively mermaid, attract Jagadatan's attention, successfully drawing its focus away from the city. As the giant monster charges towards the dancing mermaid, Lloyd urges Podong to maneuver strategically, creating an opportunity for Javier to deliver a powerful explosive blow to Jagadatan's weak point. Javier attempts a powerful strike using a silvery longsword infused with explosive and destructive mana. He triggers three rapid spinning mana circles around his heart, aiming to unleash a devastating explosion. The attack successfully penetrates the armor, creating a violent explosion. However, Javier realizes that he lacked the necessary strength to fully pierce the armor, leaving Gigatitan injured but still formidable. Lloyd, witnessing Javier's peril, urgently coordinates with Podong to rescue him. Lloyd grapples with the realization that their chances of escape are dwindling, and he contemplates the best course of action to confront Gigatitan. Ultimately, Lloyd decides to switch roles with Javier, taking on the challenge of facing Gigatitan head-on while preparing to upgrade his skills for a more potent attack. In a decisive move, he accessed the skill menu and upgraded Azrahan technique to triple circle, utilizing his accumulated RP. Despite the tight RP budget, he successfully achieved triple circle level 1, increasing the mana amplification rate to 500%. Lloyd prepared to unleash the power of the Triple Circle and face the colossal threat head-on. Despite the odds, he summoned his determination and skillfully executed the explosion, piercing Gigatitan's weak point and achieving a historic triple explosion. The battle reached a critical turning point as Lloyd's resilience and mastery of Azrahan technique proved crucial against the colossal adversary. The aftermath of the world's first triple explosion left Gigatitan, the colossal monster, lifeless on the coastal cliffs. The explosive force pierced through the one-meter-thick armor shell, melting and tearing apart the internal tissues. A few moments later, Javier wakes up and finds that the Gigatitan is already dead. He walks up to Lloyd and is shocked to see that his heart has stopped beating. But despite his heart not beating, he remains alive and is breathing normally. Javier expresses concern for Lloyd's well-being as he discovers Lloyd's heightened mana circles and the mysterious connection to Gigatitan's demise. Meanwhile, Baron Frontera receives a letter from Count Cremo telling him of what happened to Lloyd. The Baron and his wife rush to Cremo City upon receiving the news. On the way to the city, they encounter a pack of monsters and are almost killed but Javier comes to rescue them. Meanwhile, Lloyd's miraculous state, with a stopped heart but sustained respiration, puzzled everyone, including medical professionals. The Count expressed deep gratitude for Lloyd's actions and hoped for his recovery, acknowledging the immense debt owed to the young man for saving countless lives. As days pass, Lloyd's condition remains unchanged, and the city of Cremo returns to order. The city of Cremo slowly recovered from the shock, and stories of Lloyd's heroic deeds spread among the residents. Witnesses recounted how Lloyd extinguished the fire and created the hole in Gigatitan's body. The citizens gather in the square to pray for his recovery. Eventually, Lloyd opens his eyes, and the system notifies him of a substantial bonus for his societal contribution. Lloyd steps out of the sickroom and into the city, where a grand reception awaits him. Citizens cheer and celebrate his return, and he decides to embrace the attention and enjoy the moment. On a platform, he addresses the crowd. Instead of delivering a speech, he uses the opportunity to advertise Andal, a heating system, and invites inquiries at Baron Frontera's estate. The citizens are left curious, and the Count acknowledges Lloyd's audacity and ability to seize opportunities. As Lloyd departs the city with his group, the Count reflects on his intriguing character and watches them until they are out of sight. A detailed report about Lloyd's abilities and achievements, along with the advertisement for Andal, is sent to the kingdom's capital. Lloyd's departure marks the end of his time in Cremo, and the journey to the next destination begins. Byron, the most senior knight in Frontera territory, is honest and loyal but his skill as a knight is only average. Lloyd discovers Byron's talent in management as he did a great job in managing the territory. 
Lloyd's unexpected success, including a lucrative deal with Count Cremo, has allowed him to fulfill half of the debt. Lloyd, driven by a desire to catch up on the backlog of work, resumes his responsibilities. He supervises the completion of Andal heating distribution in Frontera territory, achieving successful results and earning rewards. As spring arrives, he inspects the coal mine, checks progress on Meritz's leased housing construction, and ensures the comfort of immigrants who have chosen to settle in Frontera territory. Lloyd also builds a storage building for the coal. Busy with various tasks, Lloyd receives a surprise visit from the Chancellor of Her Majesty the Queen. Lloyd, kneeling before the Chancellor, hears a royal edict praising his courage and sacrifices in Cremo. The unexpected royal command to visit the capital with Javier leaves Lloyd feeling burdened, as he had hoped to live a quiet life after settling his debts. Reflecting on his past military experience, he recalls the consequences of standing out too much. The Chancellor's decree further complicates Lloyd's plans, but he decides to make the most of the situation and benefit from the changed circumstances. The journey to the capital is smooth and after ten days, they reach the city of Magenta. The Queen, Alicia Termina Magentano, meets Lloyd and Javier, and she challenges Lloyd to showcase his construction project oversight abilities. Lloyd, well prepared for this moment, begins his move to win the Queen's favor and secure construction contracts. Queen Alicia asks Lloyd of what he thinks is the most urgent construction project needed in Magenta. Lloyd boldly proposes the construction of a new bridge over the Magina River to Queen Alicia as the most urgent project for Magenta. He explains that the current bridge frequently collapses due to spring floods, and a suspension bridge would be the ideal solution to withstand such conditions. Lloyd confidently assures the Queen that he can build a bridge that will not collapse during floods. Queen Alicia reveals that she had a different answer in mind, renovating the royal palace. Despite her initial surprise, she acknowledges Lloyd's superior solution to the long-standing problem of the Magina River Bridge. Queen Alicia, intrigued by his proposal, challenges him to proceed with the construction. Lloyd, however, surprises her by requesting a guarantee for his family's position until the completion of the bridge. The Queen agrees to his proposal, and Lloyd's confidence secures the construction project. Lloyd's construction preparations are set in motion under the Queen's expectations. On an unusually sunny afternoon, Lloyd begins surveying the Magina River to gather data for his proposed suspension bridge. As spectators gather, particularly fascinated by Javier, Lloyd grows frustrated by the distraction and decides to proceed with the survey. Lloyd takes a break to fulfill a task given by Baron Frontera, to deliver a large package to his younger brother at Magenta University and the Royal Academy. The anticipation of meeting his unknown younger brother builds as Lloyd embarks on this errand. Lloyd reflects on the limited information he has about Julian from the novel and the uneasy feeling of meeting his younger brother for the first time. Lloyd contemplates the past mention of Julian's tragic death and the changes in the timeline. Julian, in turn, recalls the image of Lloyd as a troublesome drunkard. The unexpected normalcy in Lloyd's behavior and his willingness to engage in conversation create a sense of confusion and discomfort for Julian. As they decide to have a meal together, Julian grapples with the surreal situation of spending time with a brother he had only known through tragic stories. Lloyd, aware of the awkwardness, tries to ease the tension. The reunion between the two brothers unfolds in a way neither of them had anticipated. Julian, initially determined to ask Lloyd about the events in Cremo, is interrupted by the arrival of Diego, a fellow student with whom he had a strained relationship. Diego, larger and stronger, had distanced himself from Julian due to his low-ranking noble status. Diego, now confrontational, accuses Julian of breaking the academy rules by eating openly in the dormitory. Julian, feeling helpless, lowers his head and silently endures Diego's verbal and physical abuse. Lloyd observes the situation and understands the dynamics of bullying and power play at the academy. As Diego's aggression escalates, Lloyd recalls a clue about Diego's family being known for Lacanata. Lloyd, revealing his knowledge, engages Diego in conversation and swiftly delivers a powerful slap, sending him crashing into tables. Other students with Diego try to attack Lloyd but they end up with a slap to their faces. 
Lloyd's actions not only protect Julian but also expose Diego's rudeness to a distinguished guest. Lloyd concludes the confrontation with a reference to Diego's father and the unresolved tax issue, emphasizing his sympathy and compassion in a calculated manner. Diego struggles to regain composure after Lloyd delivers a sudden and powerful blow, leaving him in pain and gasping for breath. Despite Diego's attempts to resist, Lloyd's swift and calculated punches continue, causing visible injuries. Lloyd's relentless assault intensifies, targeting various parts of Diego's body. Julian, shocked and desperate, tries to intervene, but Lloyd coldly dismisses him and continues the beating with determination. Lloyd's brutality increases, and Diego eventually loses consciousness. The violent scene attracts the attention of onlookers, including a supervisor who threatens severe punishment for Lloyd's actions. However, Lloyd confidently justifies his actions, claiming that Diego insulted him and, in turn, Her Majesty the Queen. Lloyd reveals his relationship with Julian, claiming insults against his brother are insults against him and the royal family. To prove his status, Lloyd reveals a golden pendant symbolizing a special invitation personally extended by the Queen, leaving everyone in shock and silencing the once crowded restaurant. Lloyd, undeterred, sternly addresses the stunned onlookers, asserting his authority as a royal guest. He skillfully manipulates the situation, turning the tables on Diego and the supervisor. Lloyd forces Julian into a leave of absence, leaving him angry and confused. Lloyd, however, unveils a mysterious plan involving clearing up misunderstandings and rigorous training, surprising Julian with an unexpected twist, manual labor on a construction site, a stark contrast to their noble background.